This is PTG, rigid X and a regular ABS. The load is 1.25 kg. Less deformation here and these two can be printed on open printer. Welcome to my tech farm. Ed North sent me some filaments for the testing. This is PTG and this is Rigid X. And some other technical filaments are on the way too. I got these filaments for free, but uh, I'm not paid anything about this to create this video. And you can decide yourself is it sponsored or not. I mean, from your aspect, it doesn't matter. I would create completely the same video in both cases. Maybe I shouldn't talk about this because <laughs> nobody wants to sponsor me in that case. Uh, but don't worry, I'm very happy with my Patreon donations and I will continue to create this kind of videos too. Okay, back to PTG. It is available in seven colors. This is some kind of medium blue, and this is the most popular technical material for many users. According to the website, it is uh, temperature resistant up to 75 degrees Celsius, high wear resistance, excellent UV properties, and uh, good chemical resistance. They will recommend that pin temperatures are between uh, 225 and 260 degrees Celsius, and this is a 750 gram spool, but it is also available in 2.3 and 5 kg spools too. How about Rigid X? This is the carbon fiber reinforced PTG, and it is available in three colors. This is some kind of blue, and compared to the regular PTG, this is stiffer material in X and Y direction at least, and thanks to those fibers, it is more temperature resistant material, raised uh, by 10 or 20 degrees Celsius, so we are quite close uh, to the ABS filament with this property. And it has great printability thanks to these fibers, and uh, according to the website, it can have a better layer adhesion because of this, because we can print it on uh, higher temperatures too. And the recommended print temperatures are between 245 and 265 degrees Celsius. And this is something I recently tested. I tried some similar filaments to print even on 290 degrees Celsius. Now my conclusion there was that it is not really worth to go much higher above 270 degrees Celsius because I got weaker layer adhesion with printing on 290 degrees Celsius. And being thanks to comments who helped me out with this because I was quite confused here. And they explained me the base material starts to degrade on these temperatures and that's why we will have a weaker layer adhesion. So, if we follow these recommended print temperatures, we will be fine. Okay, let's see what's in the box. It arrives on these partly transparent bags and uh, on the filament we can see the same information like on the website. And pay attention that this bag is resealable on this side. And only now I notice that the rigid X arrived on a 500 gram spool. Unboxing of the PTG and it has some protection foil around the material. This is rigid X, and this one don't have that foil. And only two holes for locking end of the filament, so they should add some more. And interesting to see how matte is this surface. And it is very brittle material, rigid X. I'm starting with the drying. And the PTG go into the AMS on my P1P. And the rigid X will be printed on X1 carbon. And pay attention to that material stick to the nozzle. Later it will create some problems. And this is the PTG and pay attention to this warping so the bed adhesion is not so strong. Later I will raise the temperature because this one removed from the bed. Let's analyze the temperature towers. The overhang came out quite good on any element and also the bridging. Now only thing I noticed here that uh, this element for the string test broke off on the lowest temperature. Maybe we will see some weaker layer adhesion but we will find out that soon. And this is PETG. It was not finished because it removed from the bed, so I raised the bed temperature. But let's analyze it. The overhang came out good on any element, but also the bridging. So for better strength and the layer adhesion, I will print everything on 260 degrees Celsius. So these are my final settings for the test objects. 260 on the nozzle, 85 on the bed, and 12 with the max flow rate. And this is the default part cooling. And for the rigid X. 265 on the nozzle and 70 on the bed and 11.5 the maximal flow rate. Some footage of the printing, this is the rigid X, real time speed of the printing on X1 carbon. And this is PETG, printing is on P1P. The bed cooled down on both printers. Mm -hmm, perfect. 
and on the other one. Great. There are some using material on the nozzle and it stick here to this layer, but this is easy to cut off with the pliers. All other objects are perfect. They are ready for mechanical testing. The first is the tensile test. Smallest cross section array is 4x4mm. I am starting with PETG. This is the average value. And now rigid X. Better than the PETG. And the layer adhesion with the vertically printed test objects. Acceptable layer adhesion. Let's see the rigid X. And this is even better. And as you requested, analyzing the results immediately after the testing. On a tensile test with horizontally printed test objects, we can see that the rigid X is slightly better, but it is also better on the layer adhesion test, which is interesting because usually these uh, fibers makes the layer adhesion a little bit weaker, but here it's not the case. Two-sided shear stress with horizontally and vertically printed test objects. I'm starting with horizontally printed ones. And these are printed in vertical position. Not bad. And here again the rigid X was better in both cases. With the horizontally printed objects, those uh, fibers really helps in this shear stress. And with vertical printed test objects, uh, that layer adhesion is important here. The torque or twist test with horizontally and vertically printed test objects. These are printed in horizontal position. This is the load at 90 degree rotation. And I will record the maximum load too. 1.5, 1.3. Printed vertically. As you can 1. see, they break more suddenly. And again, similar numbers, but different type of the breaks. This printed vertically breaks more suddenly. Three point embedding test, and here you can see when all loads are placed, but I'm placing them one by one. And I'm measuring the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. This is the deformation under 2.5 kilograms under 5 kilograms and under 10 kilograms and pay attention very minimal additional deformation during the time. After this test no visual deformation on them, maybe just a little bit on the PTG. This is a deformation under these loads after 30 seconds and the smaller values are better of course, but this is more interesting where we can see the deformation under these loads after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. And here the rigid X was uh, stronger, less deformation, but also we can see that it, the, in both cases they can handle quite good those uh, bigger loads, because this was very minimal deformation during the time, even under 10 kg load. And also check that summary table for my Patreon supporters, and this is the stiffest PTG I tested so far. Impact test, this is PTG. Zero position. Rigid X. At the first look, I'm not really sure I have to analyze the footage. Zero position of the hammer after breaking the PTG, after rigid X. And if I measure everything from the zero position, I can get these numbers. This is the age, which I can use in this calculation. But this also means that the PTG is slightly tougher material. And this is the only test where the PTG was better compared to the rigid X. But in both cases, these are quite brittle materials, like every other average PTG. And yes, PTG is more brittle compared to the PLA. Uh, definitely I should create a video about this. The creep test, the deformation under the constant load of 1.25 kg. And I'm measuring the distance between two reference surfaces. This is the rigid X. And definitely this deformation is very minimal. Better than some ABS and ESA parts. The last fifth day of the measuring, and this is incredible stiff material, this rigid X. 1976. 15, 14. Removing of the load. With really no permanent deformation on the rigid X. And this is one of those tests where this rigid X really shines, even if it is matte filament. This is the distance between two reference surfaces, so smaller values mean uh, less deformation, but the difference between two days is the creeping and that what we can see on this graph. And we can see that even on the first day it has very minimal creeping or deformation. So this rigid X really beats here many ABS and ASA filaments.
Temperature test in the oven, M10 nut as a small load, and I want to record the temperature of the first deformation, and the PTG started to deform at 63 degrees Celsius, and rigid X on 88, which is very close to the ABS properties, and on 109 degrees Celsius I stopped the experiment, and I checked how soft they are, both are soft and maybe the PTG is more flexible compared to the rigid X. So those fibers really helps with the temperature resistance. And one more time all results on one place without any comments. And these two lines will be added to the summary table for my Patreon supporters so they can compare this data to any of those from my previous videos. And being thanks to them this is my only gift because they keep this channel alive. YouTube algorithm don't really recommend my videos for some reason. For the end, I'm really impressed with the stiffness of this rigid X. It resists great to the bending and creeping, and also it has great temperature resistance. So with these properties, it is very close to the ABS, for example. But I think the weakest point of this material is the price. But for those who don't have enclosed printer, for example, this may be very valuable because uh, it is printable on open side printers too. And I want to show you some statistics to explain why you should subscribe and enable that notification bell button too. But basically 80% of you who is watching this video already did this. I have almost 60,000 subscribers, but my average views is around 5,000. And basically 4,000 enable this notification bell button too. If you watch similar size channel, they have much bigger number of the views. I'm not sure what is the reason. I hope once somebody at YouTube will start with the CD printing and maybe they will figure out that um, there is some value in my videos. But I'm not really complaining here because uh, my driving force is from Patreon donations and basically they are independent from the number of the views. I'm just telling you if you like this kind of videos then you should subscribe and enable that notification bell button too otherwise you can very easily miss my new uploads because as I mentioned for some reason my videos are not really recommended. Anyway thank you for watching this video until the end and I wish you happy printing.